Welcome back to the Red Bull Team Brawl Hearthstone presented by the all-new 2016 Honda Civic. My name is Frodan. I'm joined by TJ Oz and McCutie Sanders to bring you guys the third match of the day. No more drafting until the grand final, so we're out of the way with that. Really exciting to see how the nitty-gritty goes down. These guys are definitely experiencing a lot, learning a lot, for better or for worse, how counting works. Yeah, exactly. I, it takes three people to be able to count to 27 or how, 28. Or how many Tempo Storm members does it take to count lethal? You tell me. Apparently more than three. <laughs> Less than three is actually the, the correct <laughs> answer here, TJ. But, uh, you know, they're not going to be playing just yet. They have a moment to opportunity to reset their minds. Instead, we're keeping on Team Liquid to start mix and matching the round robin group stage. Who's Team Liquid playing next here, TJ? Uh, they're playing uh, Archon. So this is going to be a good matchup. The drafting phase is over. These guys, they built their decks, and now it's start to, time to get into the meat of the competition. Uh, where now they have to master these decks. And uh, they've been close matches so far, 5-4 both sides. So mm -hmm. it's still anybody's game. Any two teams can make it to the finals. Uh, you just want those close scores at the beginning, and that's a, it's at the end in those last two matches where it really counts. Every team can still win, even if they lost their first match. We saw Archon and Liquid win both of their first matches. So we're going to see one team almost certainly advance based off of their record here, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, you can go ahead and look at the standings. We have Archon, who is at their first match win, one one series win with five games won in that series. Team Liquid was able to take out Tempest Storm just now by winning their series 5-4. to Yeah, and, and like we said, it, it, it was really close, though. So Cloud9 uh, and Tempo Storm. Uh, they both still have a, a good shot to make it to the finals because of those game score wins. Uh, so they need to bring their A game for the uh, next two matches. But this is going to be the good one. These are the two leaders. These are the two teams that won their first matches. And it looks like we're already jumping into a game here. Yeah, no more waiting, guys. We recognize that it's, it's time to really get to the meat of the action, see how these teams' decks continue to line up. We're going to begin things with Zelay versus Dog, of Hunter versus Rogue. They're centered up here. And right off the bat, the King's Elec trying to go for a huge swing. If you're able to grab that uh, three drop of the Argent Horse Rider up, that's one of the best cards you can ask for the format for Hunter to control the board or be really aggressive. Yeah, that's very true. And on the other hand, we have Dog's Rogue deck, which uh, was 3-0 and in their match. He won all three of his games. It's insane. He's got Deadly Poison, Tinker's Sharp Soil. He's got Blade Flurry, Assassin's Blade. He's got those board sweeps, which we've talked about throughout the day. Yeah. Those board sweeps, that AOE, it's so crucial in this format. How important is it to have these cards versus have the early game play, though, TJ? One thing that you evaluate is you want to be able to play minions proactively, especially mm -hmm. against a class like Hunter, who's supposed to be aggressive against you. That's going to be you know, hard to come back from if they're doing too much damage and you're fighting too far behind on board. Yeah, and talking to a couple of the uh, arena oh, players here, there, there's the, that's a lot of damage. Uh, they really said that the Rogue Hero Power is such a, an MVP in uh, these types of match where you, you're looking at value. You have two damage across two turns that you can choose when you, when you can use it with the Rogue Hero Power. But as you mentioned, Hunter, uh, they can punish you. They're one of the classes that can punish you pretty heavily for taking too much damage by swinging early game. So that's going to be cool to see the balance of this super strong Rogue deck uh, versus, you know, can they outrace this, this Hunter deck, which... Uh, has uh, some semblance of board control early on. One of the worst feelings in the world, too, against as the rogue is that you just have to constantly use your own hero power or your own health pool mm -hmm. as a way to trade. Like, if he plays Deadly Poison, Dog has to continually use that weapon to hit minions which already hit him, falling really far behind. And this is not the case where you have access to heal bots or ways to restore health or taunt very easily. Yeah. You have to be reliant on drawing that Sludge Belcher based off it. So Dog has some insane burst, but does he have time? Because he's yeah. going to definitely go for a big board clear here. I also saw that Dog has Earthering Fars here and that Sludge Belcher, like you said. So he does have yeah. his hand in one of the games in the last game where he had SI, Backstab, swear Earthering, Sap. Right? I was, yeah, I was like, well, this this seems a little bit weird. They were mm. even laughing about it. Uh, so that's kind of funny. But yeah, they, yeah. Gnomish Inventor, too, uh, with Backstab. They can take control a little bit with the tempo here. Oh, there it is. Further, yeah. It's a really valuable card. Dog willingly trade a little bit with his own health pool because he wants to preserve the health of the Mounted Raptor, especially if Houndmaster or something came on turn four. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to be devastated. So it looks like a very clear Tomb Spider, uh, maybe with a follow-up Hunter's Mark. That could really seize back the board. And I'm also looking at some other games. We have a Druid, we have a couple of mirrors, Druid mirrors and Mage mirrors here, TJ. Mm -hmm. What's the most interesting thing that you're seeing that we should jump to right now? Uh, it looks like uh, Druid matchups in general are usually really close at this stage just because uh, they both sort of have these big creatures that they're going to play, especially these two decks. They, they're so similar. Mm -hmm. They both have those 
uh, valuable removal like Bomb Lobber, and they both have huge taunts. I think both decks have Sludge Belchers. Uh, you know, the, the bottom deck here, I believe that's the uh, Team oh. Archon deck, has Ancient of War. Sorry, TJ, I don't want to mean to cut you off because it looks like we have a couple of five drops between the Fen Creeper and the Belcher, but over in the Mage Mirror between Savitz and Amaz, we just had an unstable portal coined into Anexia on turn five. Wow. That's insane. And now, all of a sudden, Savitz doesn't know what to do. Savitz is like, oh my god, how do I deal with this much stats onto the board? I think Typical they, Amaz. I think they have to Ethereal Conjurer into some sort of AoE here. They do get three choices, but it, it's it's pretty unlikely. I mean, what else are they going to do? They can't just ignore everything. They, that Anixir is going to keep swinging in. Right. And also we see that, um, was it Team Archon who's on the top side? Yeah. Uh, they have lots of Temple tools too. They have Blizzard, so they can protect that Anixir with the AoE. So uh, Ethereal Conjurer right. seems, seems like the right way to go. You know what? I can probably add another person who won't be missing some of those goblins versus gnomes cards when they get rotated out. This yeah. is exactly why people hate seeing Unstable Portal. Some people love plays. It's their yeah. favorite card. It's one of my favorite cards to play with. But, of course, you're, when you're on the receiving end of something like this, it's devastating. Amaz has overwhelming board control. Those 1-1s one might not look intimidating by themselves, but if you look at the impact cards like Muster for Battle have and how you're able to pick up trades, especially with the Mage Hero yeah. Power, it's looking pretty bad. The only thing is that he, Maz definitely wants to look up for better minions. So yeah. we'll see if he's able to piece it together in the coming turns. Yep. So we're back to the Dog uh, versus Zalay matchup. And uh, these were the two decks that performed the best in their respective rounds. I believe went, Zalay went 2-1. and one. Dog, as we mentioned, 3-0. and oh. And Dog has taken full board control here. And he still is holding on to that burst combination. The Deadly Poison, the Tinker Sharp Soil, plus the Blade Flurry. So it's looking really grim for Zalay. He does have the Unleash the Hounds, but he needs something on top of that to really take control of the board. It's just like a little bit off from being a perfect board clear. If he had Dread Scale and Unleash the Hounds, that's actually a complete wipe onto the board. Mm -hmm. If that taunt wasn't in the way. You'd be able to attack perfectly into one health, and Stress Skill has an ability that deals one damage to every minion at the end of the turn. So while it's not perfect, you have to compromise here. And it seems like Zelay is just gonna stay clear almost everything except for the SI7 agent, yeah. and I like that. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that in this format, any card is possible. Including that card, Healbot, which is such a big draw. That is nuts! This deck, they have Earthering Forest here, they have Healbot, they have Sludge Belcher on top of that. That is... Yep. He has Insane. the assortment of weapons with Assassin's Blade, Oils, Deadly Poisons, Blade Flurry. I mean, he's he's got a lot of power. I mean, I think he's one Violet Teacher away from having Zelay <laughs> raise his hand and asking for a deck check. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty funny. And I don't know if they're, if Archon's going to get, or Zelay is going to get very much value out of this Unleash the Hounds because yeah. um, I mean, last turn was probably the best that they're going to get for mm -hmm. it. And the, the, the clear just wasn't clean enough. Uh, to make Ooh. it worthwhile, so. I like this. You know, one thing that I was going to point out is that this is looking like a very good synergistic deck, but one thing I know Dog doesn't have is Sprint, mm -hmm. and he recognizes that I have very limited resources, so I need to get as much mileage as possible. Yes, Sap is on a three-mana minion. Sure, that card has impact onto the board, but right now, I need to just try to win here and now. Love this play from Dog, and it's a large reason of why he's 3-0 so far in this tournament. Yeah, very true. And uh, they're leaning towards Animal Companion right now. The Draconid Crusher, uh, it seems like a, a viable option as well. Animal Companion could punish them because if they get like a Huffer, they're not in a situation where racing mm -hmm. seems like a viable option. And Huffer just gets traded into by one of these creatures. So uh, Leok as well, just the hero power in the anti kill bot alone, make it a favorable trade. Definitely. Now, discover op oh, sorry, it's not a discover option, it's a tracking option. So we know that there's a lot of aggressive options at Team Archon's disposal goes for a Knife Juggler, which combines so well with that Unleash the Hounds. Mm -hmm. Let's count how much damage Dog has here. With the Oil and the Flurry, that's 12. And if he lands it with the 6, that's 9. That's Is that lethal? I think it might be. This is kind of like the old Oil Road days. It's, oh, it's one, one off. off. But and he didn't have enough mana for Flurry. Yeah. I, I mean, but it's all but over. They can Blade Flurry. Even if the board mm -hmm. is completely clean uh, this turn, they can Blade Flurry next turn, plus just re-dagger up. And hit face. So, so it needs a health, or it needs a it needs health restoration. Yeah. Or, not even like a Lothab off the top would be able to stop it. Yeah. Uh, even Sludge Belcher, the Blade Flurry kills the. Well, actually, no, because you need to kill the Worgen Infiltrator. So you'd have to juggler unleash mm -hmm. and then roll. No, not even Misha would do it. Yeah, because, not even Misha, just because the Blade, the Blade Flurry, Flurry goes past it, right? Yeah. 
So that would mean that Team Archon goes on a... Uh, it loses this game. We did see that Amaz, unsurprisingly, was able to bowl over Savitz with that early game on Nixia. Not that surprising of an ending there. Yeah. No plot twist. A la M. Night Shalomon. In this case, we're going to have a 1 1 series deciding it, and Dog's going to go Blade Flurry, Hero Power. Doesn't even really need anything else off the top of his deck. Yeah. To even draws the Assassin's Blade. Even draws the Assassin's Blade. Yeah, that's pretty funny. You yeah. know, one thing that's also interesting is that he had to reveal it. If he didn't have to, I'm interested if he would have concealed that information to say, I don't have Blade Flurry, because Archon didn't get to watch the previous match. Yeah, we, we're keeping the players in the dark behind the yep. scenes until they played every other team. So uh, they did reveal it, but not in this matchup at least. And uh, of course, that makes Dog's Rogue deck now 4-0 uh, so far total across Dang. both their matches. Against two Hunters. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. We have our last game of the Heat number one here. It is a Druid Mirror between Amnesiac and Trump. Trump is on the bottom here, representing Team Liquid. And Amnesiac is pretty much all in on these minions. And Trump has what basically is what he's known for, which is a lot of value because his minions are just better. So he's going to be able to pick up pretty good trades, and that's all you care about here. You don't really want to rush your opponent. Some people who mm -hmm. watch Hearthstone for a long time saying, well, don't I want to play for a Force of Nature Savage Rorts? Yeah. It's not that case. They don't even, I don't even think they even run that combo. Uh, especially against Druid, a lot of times you can be punished because Druids have a lot of those big drops, uh, like Ancient of War, like oh. uh, Ironbark Protector, like Volcanic Lumber. So if you leave creatures up sometimes, yeah. they could punish you uh, by protecting those smaller ones that they got better trades off with big taunts. Yeah. No trades. Very interesting, indeed. Yeah. I guess they just feel like they're mm -hmm. really in the lead here. All right, we've been chatting for a while. We know you guys want to listen to the players. So let's see what they're talking about here in the final stages of Heat number one. Your 7-7 seven, seven trades so well, and so does your 3-3. Three, three. You're fine. Oh, no, never mind, because he did that. I think he's going face with yeah. all of them. Looked like yeah. it. If you Makes go sense. face with the 7... Ooh, can I get a full clear now? You can, yes. No, wait, wait, wait. No, wait, there's going to be like a minion left behind yeah. from the... Just Burly, tr Claw, and then go face with the Force Tank and trade into the 4-3, right? Let's see, so then he has 8. Shouldn't I just play it safe and full clear, except the one random one drop? It might be smart. That, that yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. She's you're so, right. doing so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I kill this first, or do I kill it last? Uh, I think the last. I think you kill it last as well. Yeah, it might yeah. be like a Void Caller Shield. The only thing that something. punishes you is uh, the Poison Snake. Oh yeah, that would be bad, but oh well. But th this more taunts. Yeah, so I'll kill this, this, and this last. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, that's good. Hopefully no, no snake. Position. Just this. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, no! <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh my Should've gone face, oh I guess. I don't god. know, that's, that's some bad RNG. What a joke. I mean, I could've done it first. That's so unlucky. I would say just, like, it depends what that is. If your minion is better, you're still ahead. We're getting okay. Skamaz, but... You're actually, <laughs> you're actually still ahead, because you're getting it to draw first. Yeah. My deck's pretty big, too. Yeah, My you goodness, have a lot of TJ, big what minions. did we just see? We saw people accounting for the worst-case scenario. Yeah. And you know what? I have to say that they jinxed it. Yeah. Something that you have to be mindful of is the more you hope that it isn't that card, it's going to be that card. It's a really tough situation because they were right in the fact that there is more taunts. There's Tournament Attendee, there's Shield Bear, there's Whoa. Ward Walker, but, um, wow, Azure Drake in this God. situation. Azure Drake is insane because it, it helps you use your mana. Yeah. One of the biggest problems in this case of the late game is that because you don't have cards, you can't utilize all your mana crystals. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're not playing very efficiently. And when you only play four to six, uh, and you're playing all 10 because the Azure Drake will most likely pick up something that you can fill with your hero power. Yeah. I'm feeling Trump here to wrap things up, even though he definitely was not happy about that pit snake coming out. Yeah. It was so funny. We could see the, all the members from uh, Archon High Five on the pit snake came out. <laughs> they like, were great so job, happy guys. Great for job. a second. Like, yeah, 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 I know. I'm, I'm really good at Hearthstone. Yeah. That's kind of the jokes that really come out here. Yeah. But, I mean, how, how can you not feel bad for Trump when you see that come down? Yeah, it's pretty rough. It was funny as they even mentioned it. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Power card. And that's going to take Team Liquid to draw something just as big. And that's the smaller minion, so they're, they're still in it. I mean, they can't deal with it this yeah. turn. Is there, do they have a swipe in this deck? Uh, because I don't know. A swipe would end it. They need five damage here, so four damage yeah. plus the hero power. Any four damage. So Archon's still in it. That's not bad. You can go face and try to see how aggressive you can yeah. be. I don't think you're in the, the position to try and play too many trade games because you just have to end the game. Yeah. 
This is super close. Yeah. Oh, they're debating. Let's go ahead and hop into Team Mark and see what they're talking about. I have played my Keeper. I have... True the Charge. I have Living Roots. No, True the Charge is gone. I have two Living oh, Roots. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I have one Living Roots. Oh, do you have the 2-1 um, the Charge? No, we didn't put Andy in here. Oh, okay, you know it's Andy too. Perfect. I, I, I kind oh of no, don't. it's a choose one, it's a choose one. That's fine. So they go for 5-2. They put us. Oh my god, they actually put me turn? down. Yeah. Shit. Alright, here we go. Oh! Living Roots! Please! Come on! Ah! Do it! Yeah! Oh, let's go! Yeah! Oh! Easy game! Yeah! <laughs> oh, uh, Did sick. we all win? No, no, two no, one. I lost. Okay. Yeah, he, he, had, he had like sap, deadly oil, flurry. He like oh fucked me up. God. Yeah. Oh my. Oh. All right. So now we switch seats, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Would you want so it any I... other way, TJ? No, that Would was. Would you want it any other way? It was such an incredible finish. As soon yeah. as we went to that game, it was looking terrible. Right. The, the pit snake to take out. Yeah. The force take oh, max man. into the top deck swipe. I really Nuts. thought Trump Crazy. was still okay. Yeah. You know, I really thought that when he picked up the Azure Drake off that Raven Idol, that was like, okay, that's it. Yeah. He's going to outvalue his opponent. It doesn't matter how low he is on HP because he's going to ultimately win the race of, yep. of minions onto the board. And now all of a sudden the series has been blown wide open because I thought Team Liquid was in a position to maybe you know, go 3-0, but they're now, now down 1-2. to This is a really bad spot to be in. Yeah, and that match ended up being the Heat Decider. You, you hear them at yep. the end. Uh, Zalate being the only one that lost to the Rogue deck from Dog. Yeah. That, that, that deck's insane. I, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Dog went 9-0 with it in group stages. Yeah, I made a dangerous prediction like that in the first matchup with Strife Grow's Mage deck. <laughs> so <laughs> Dr. I, Boom. Yeah, I think right now it's like 1-2 and two or 0-3. Oh I don't even know if he won a game. So sure. uh, I'm going to stray away from trying to predict 9-0s, mm -hmm. but that deck is insane. I, I might take that deck list and go bring it into Constructed when we're done here. Okay, it sounds, it sounds pretty fun and a good reliable way to climb the ladder. Uh, I do want to correct myself. I said it was a bad position relative to what they expected to be in. I was looking for something good because Savita's opening hand last game looked great, but then Amaz mm -hmm. blew him out yeah. with that Onyxia. And now we're going into game number two on, or excuse me, heat number two. I'm going to get used to that, TJ. Yeah. I keep calling it game number two. It's heat two, where all of them are playing at the same time. Once again, you're watching the team brawl where everybody's playing the decks that they created from the team seal draft tool. And now we have what looks like to be uh, Mage for Team Liquid. So that's Savitz versus Amnesiac. So it's going to be a very interesting yeah. match to see what these guys are going to be going next. Yeah, and uh, speaking of decks that look a lot like constructed decks, uh, this deck here from Savitz is looking pretty good. They got the Temple 2 early on. Being on the coin with Flame Waker is fantastic, especially with Arcane Missiles. Uh, that's a lot of gaining tempo, which can help swing a match, especially if you follow it up with Snowball cards like the Cavaldir Raider. Uh, you can really run away with the game. So um, really good start for them. Okay, well, Flame Waker trying to do Flame Waker things. I mean, if it misses these minions, that'd be pretty nutty, but looks like it gets a very clean removal. And that's really big. A secret and a Flame Waker onto the board. How do you deal with this as Druid? Even if you had to pick the regular cards you want, this is very bad. Yeah, and especially since it's Mirror Entity, which is, you know, one of the banes of Druid. When Druid falls behind on board, it's really hard for them to come back. Uh-oh, Fireball Yikes. off the top. Uh, that's the stuff made of nightmares. Yeah, and I, there there might be merit here for saving the, the fireball since you do a flame waker. Frostbolt could be a full clear. Um, if That's true. If the flame waker doesn't hit the chill and at all, it's still frozen, so you can deal with it next turn. But you really have to plan ahead huh. in those situations. I actually I don't mind that. Uh, you get to save fireball for turn five because turn five looks to be like you either drop Cavaldi Raider. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean the fireball is a guaranteed clear, and you get to do two more damage to face while pushing a Cavaldi Raider. I, I like the Fireball. Frostbolt's also more versatile because as you get more mana, you can piece it together to fit the right curve because you're not going to yeah. have nine mana, ten mana minions all the time. Yeah. So as you get later into the stage of the game, you can pick apart and piece together a good set of mana usage. I like that. Fits the curve better. So uh, double Living Roots now. Uh, that was one of the cards that they were hoping for at the end there. Ended up getting the swipe, but uh, right now it's just going to be used as removal, and this means that uh, Amnesiac and, and Team Archon might run out of steam a little bit. They're using a lot of resources yeah. uh, to take out these creatures. That Flame Waker has just been such high value. I like this play a lot from Amnesiac. A lot of people are going to look, why did you put it as a 5-2? It's so vulnerable, but if Mage didn't have an easy way to do two damage that was as convenient as his Fallen Hero, 
and the lowly squire draw then uh it, it, it would have been a case where it could have traded for the yeti this is looking like savitz might have this against amnesiac let's go ahead and turn our focus into the deck of the tournament in my opinion the rogue versus the mage uh dog has not lost a single game so far and for good reason his deck has oiled like a machine <laughs> <laughs> yes it has and as we can see, Anubarak is also in the deck. So even if they, even, need it. even if they man, even if he manages to not win the game by like say turn ten or eleven, he still has that Anubarak that he can just put down, use all of his many weapons to uh, clear the board and just keep that keep that sucker alive. So it's oh man, this is a thing of beauty. Somewhere in the world, Ben Brode is roaring with laughter because he sees Anubarak winning games. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, let me pair, rephrase that. Uh, a, Nubrock is in a deck that's winning games. Yeah. We haven't actually seen it played at all, uh, but hypothetically, that card is one of the highest value cards in the entire game of Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. uh, Anubarak has a text that says, Death Rattle, whenever this dies, return it to your hand and summon a 4-4 Nerubian, uh, which is the same as that comes out of the egg. Yeah, it's very, very powerful. So in these types of situations where you're in these battles where decks tend to run out of resources, at the end of the game, when both decks are start top decking, Anubarak is infinite value because sure. your opponent can't draw enough to deal with the Nerubian mm -hmm. and, you know, come back enough on board to to kill you. Elite Shoran Chieftain, one of those interesting cards that helps your opponent as well as hurts yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Amaz got the card that says Rogues Do It, which deals four damage and draws a card. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a little bit better version mm -hmm. of Hammer of Wrath. Yep. And then I believe I am Murloc, I am which Murloc. summons any amount of Murloc. Uh, which would have been great if he was playing any Finn, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah. Let's take a look at uh, the other game as well. We have uh, what looks like to be Zelay against Trump. Mm -hmm. What's the board state look like here to you, TJ, before we go to listen in? Uh, well, there's not too high of uh, value in the cards left in, in Trump's hand, uh, but they do have a Colt Master. Mm -hmm. uh, like, Innervate with cheap cards is not the best thing you want in the world, but Colt Master will allow them uh, to draw more. But uh, uh, let's take a listen in to see what they're thinking about. What do we get? Rogues do it? Yep. That's rough. Oh, wow. wow. That's good. Yeah, that was a reason to trade, I guess. Um, you could try and believe in the juggler. Juggler Alec or Juggler Creeper? I like Juggler Alec. You already have three twos for him to trade into? No. Uh, okay, my system didn't work. Oh. Um... I think you just roast do it, ping. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Damn. Okay. Did you win? Oh, why didn't you trade first? I guess you could have hit the four four. Yeah. Yeah, that's better odds. So I'm trading here. Yeah, it's a little better. I think. Yeah. Ooh. Wait, how'd you get a cleric? Tongue dragon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How good is trade trade? You just Yeti, saw, you, stoppers, ping. Hey, what happened? He he literally had a tempo mage draw. Oh, he right. just killed me on six. Wait, I just so want to play two Yeti two. here, right? No, I just want to play Yeti here for next turn. How bad is it to just play the 8 8? Is it bad? No, it's not bad. He just used Sap too, right? Yeah. So you could go either Yeti, Puddle Stomp, or Ping, trade into the 5 5. I like or the just, 8 8. Just trade, trade, 8 8, right? Yeah, I like that more. Wow. Uh, morale seems to be, you know, interestingly low. I think it's probably because the leg got blown out yeah. very quickly by Amnesia. Uh, sorry, not by Amnesia. His teammate, he got blown out by Savit. Savit ended up uh, yeah. winning that game very convincingly. Yeah. He even said it himself in the team comms. It was like a tempo mage start. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it really was. They had Mad Scientist, which pulled a mirror entity, which if you're a druid without much hard removal, mm -hmm. is nearly impossible for you to come back. But this match right here, uh, you know, Dog's deck, it, it didn't win <laughs> as quick as it has in the past. Nope. 
but it summons the <laughs> Murlocs here, which is just so interesting because the Flame Waker here does introduce some interesting possible ways to pick yeah. it apart, but outside of Arcane Intellect, there's not many spells. Yeah, that's very true. And um, maybe they can pick up some cheap spells with the Arcane Intellect. I know mm. that this deck did have some cheap spells. Yep. Um, most notably Flame Cannon, Frostbolt, things like that. So Sure. Uh, we'll have to see if they can pick that up. I'd imagine they would need to go for that. They can try and just play big guys and maybe, you know, start swinging face with the Frost Giant to put them on a clock. But that's really dangerous now that they know what Dog's deck has. Yes, absolutely. With two oils, uh, Assassin's Blades, etc., it's very difficult to kind of balance how much damage you want to race versus how much you trade on board. Mm -hmm. Another here interesting tension that we'll see develop right before we go back into listening to their comms is that, uh, you know, we do have a lot of infinite longevity with the do. value off of Nubarak, but yeah. Mage will have a lot more cards, a lot more ways to deal with things. And as a That's result, true. even though you have a Nubarak, which by himself, if you have a million life, is great, but, uh, you know, Mage will eventually outflood you with more minions, yeah. and you only can play a Nubarak every turn. You can't play anything else except yeah. Backstab. Definitely or, looking to see what's going to happen. Let's hop back in uh, with the comms and see what's going to happen uh, with Archon here. I'm dead. Yeah. I think he ripped Flurry. Oh, probably. Yeah. He's thinking about re-daggering here. You want to trade the one ones first and try to get the oil on this one. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I'll do that first. Let me re-tagger and then yeah. just uh, trade oh, this Oh, that's one. so good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> seems good. <laughs> yes, seems pretty good. We should <laughs> no stealth or plus one health. Though. Oh, I wish. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think he got flame strike. I think that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah, Root's a uh, second Flame Waker. Root's this guy's so many Flame down. Wakers, though. Yeah. It's annoying. Ah, <sighs> killed the best Yeah, one. he got the important hit. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, my hand's, like, value. So I don't really yeah, you probably much. got this anyway. I don't have any more burn, aside from one more oil and one mm -hmm. more deadly. That's all, that's all the amount of burn I have. So, so a stealth to 3 2 instead? Yeah. Well, no, because then you might want to ping, right? So you should stealth the Chow instead. Okay. I think if he does any trading, it's good for you. Uh, it's good trade for the flame maker, anyways. <laughs> God, this is pathetic. All right, yeah, just play it. I'm about to hunter's mark this one too, <laughs> and horse rider in there. Yeah, I think you concede. Don't give him any information. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't think you should concede. You just kind of pass and not play stuff. No, I think you literally should give up. I, don't, I think you should concede ever. I'll just let him play buttons. Just, just oh yeah, let them let them give you information. Just like your power. Yeah. That's a good idea, actually. I like that. There's the wobbling here. Oh wow, that's perfect. So just play this, this ping, right? Yeah. Can't afford to deal with that thing right now. He has juggler. He has unleash probably. Yeah. Uh, you can, you can just draw a card. You can draw a card. Yeah, yeah. Don't play the. Uh, don't summon a 1-1 one -one from your guy, though. Yeah, I should play Shade? Yes, but draw first. Uh, okay. Ooh. It's probably worth playing. Uh, this hero power. So. I think you go sh uh, hero power, Shade, and 3-drop, and then go uh, trade with the Mech Warper and face face. Hero power, Shade, and 3-drop. Yeah, don't get the 1-1 one -one from the 3-drop, though. Yeah, do, don't, do not get the 1-1. One -one. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. They might have just like given up and don't want to reveal any more cards. <laughs> yeah. I should kill this, right? I should uh, assassin's blade that, and then trade there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Right. I like that a lot. Yeah, just go for the belcher. All right, Next so uh, it looks like we have the hero power pass. It's normally a, a turn two priest play, but yeah. sometimes not very viable on turn nine for Hunter. Uh, it looks like Zelay's gonna drop this one as well. So Zelay, even though he did pretty well in the previous series for his team, struggling a little bit here against decks that have great starts against him. Trump and Savitz getting wins against Zelay.
This is the last game of Heat 2, yeah. and that will lead us straight into the game deciding, or the match deciding, Heat number 3. Yeah, uh, very true. And uh, that's one of the weaknesses we pinpointed earlier when we saw that Hunter deck in action. If it, it, it doesn't draw those cool pieces like the Colt Master in combination with Unleash or Juggler Unleash, uh, then it can struggle to come yeah. back if it falls behind. And we're getting to that situation yeah. where, the you know, rock. yeah, but the point that you made, <laughs> oh, wow. Well, okay, so, you know, with Heelbot and a Nubarok, I mean, I see some amazing mileage <laughs> that can come out of here. Almost as much mileage as you can get yeah. with an all-new 2016 <laughs> Honda Civic, TJ. Indeed. I have, a, I have a 2006 Honda Civic, and I'm looking to upgrade. <laughs> my, my Honda Civic's gave me so much mileage, man. Great. That, that was a great car a decade ago. Yeah. Well, Burgle could also um, be pretty crazy if they draw, if they Burgle into... You know, a, a high quality spell or something like that, then uh, that could be a pretty true. big deal. That might be lethal, hypothetically. Yeah. Uh, you, but I mean, when if you're not going to play New Rock now, when will you? This is a relatively safer point if you can taunt it, because mm -hmm. you have 17 health. It's almost impossible for your opponent to have the exact combination outside of absurd Frostbolt <laughs> Ice Lance with spell power yeah. stuff to really get past you, right? Yeah, and Dog's the only one that's allowed to have, you know, Constructed-esque deck decks. And uh, with the Rusty Horn as well, that's, you know, something that you can Ooh, play. Ooh. That's, that's cute, yeah. to say the least. You know, one thing we were talking about is like how the Wobbling Runs get value, but by placing the Taunt onto the Wobbling Run, sure, it doesn't have much health, but you guarantee that you have six more damage on board, or four more damage with six total from the Wobbling Runs. Mm -hmm. Assuming your opponent doesn't have some kind of Silence or Polymorph. Yeah. So, uh, Spell Singer here, uh, it's sort of bittersweet because, yeah, you can draw into a spell that might help you come back, but you're at nine health. You could also give your opponent a spell that would help, you know, them kill you. So, it, it's it's something that you want as a last resort. So, they're, they're probably trying to think right now, is it really worth it? Are we desperate enough to do it? And it looks like they are. All right, let's, let's listen in to see the final moments of this match. It's going to be a tight one. Liquid or Archon? We'll find out. Oh, Wait. my God. He has two double intellect for sure. Oh, okay. It's a lot of cycle. Yeah. yeah. And he has an Acolyte and a Gnomish. <laughs> you might want to take some risks against the mage because okay. like, it's pretty hard. They didn't have much clear. I don't know if I saw it. But they also don't have that much hard removal. Okay. Oh, wow. Crap. They're really fishing for something. No, it's not okay. over yet. But we're gonna get them to two. We're just gonna be able to do this. That's not worth stopping anything, Chris. I could like, kind of set up for lethal. I could burgle into lethal. I think so you should, yeah, do the burgle first. Yeah. You're gonna do it anyway. Oh! <laughs> I could do these, right? Yeah, just go for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's cute. I should pop this, correct? No, 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 no. Or I, I, flame strike is too strong. Don't or? you like set up the? Totally. Because they can't be. This is going can, base for Yeah, sure. yeah. They can't be both, so the flame strike it, like gives yeah, you yeah, lethal right, actually. Right, right. Okay. So we have to ping our sheep, and then we have to forgot and torch this too, right? We can stay alive, yeah, but we, can we can't win. We shouldn't show him any of those cards, right? Like we can get we can get a four one on the board and then he just plays a new rack and we lose. Is there a way we can surf, uh, get out of this though? Here's a three attack dagger. Yeah, I think we're dead. Doesn't look good. Yeah. I would uh, leave. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'd, showing them sheep would be a big mistake. So they're up. Two, two games now. Yeah. So we win all. If we win all three. three. Right. Team Liquid is on a roll, and I've got five reasons. Because those are all victories for Dog. He is carrying a lot of the load here. Now, to be fair, I believe that was a 3-0 on Liquid side. We saw Trump, Savitz, and Dog able to take a win. So that means that they are 4-2 yep. over Archon. One game is all they have to win to guarantee them a spot in the finals, I believe. Uh, I think your math is correct. Since uh, both these teams won their, their first matches, mm -hmm. um, they, it wasn't like a blowout win. They only won by one point, so right. they only have five points. So uh, it, it would be close either way, but I think mm -hmm. it, it does guarantee with those two wins. Right. So, uh, the condition, of course, is if one team goes 3-0, another team goes 0-3, and you end up tying in score yeah. uh, for second and third place. But yeah. because the two teams at one are here playing each other, it's impossible for one team outside of Liquid to go 3-0. Yeah. Uh, so they would be guaranteed to go through. So this is a very big series, but at the same time, if Archon sweeps, which is 
you know, also likely based off of how things have been going so far for them. We'll see what happens as heat number three is about to begin, TJ. Let's get into the games. I'm really excited to see what's going to wrap up this series. Archon has Zalay versus Savitz. Uh, Amaz is going to play against Trump. And Amnesiac is going to take on Dogs. See if oh, he can yikes. stop that rogue momentum because it is absolutely unstoppable so far. Yeah, so Dogs' rogue deck is undefeated. And Liquid just needs that one mm -hmm. game win. They're up 4-2. to two, So one game would secure them that spot uh, in the final. So if Dogs' deck does go 6 now, he just, you know, helped them get to the finals. I mean, he, finals. I think we just might cut the check for him. Yeah. And let Team Liquid split the chairs yeah. the rest of it. <laughs> Yeah, the chairs are pretty cool, though. They, they are pretty sweet. Not going to lie. Also pretty sweet is to see Amaz face up against Trump. This is a, mm -hmm. a classic matchup from yeah. back in the beginnings of Hearthstone. I believe both these guys have been around since almost that time. I, I think Trump got the edge earlier mm -hmm. in the very beginnings of the beta. Amaz eventually started catching on with his priest play. That's what he used to be known for. Uh, fortunately, no priest for him this time. He's just going to stick with the mage. Trump is on the druid. Ends up, uh, of course, trying to look for the early game curve. Something that is of value is that the mage against the druid has always been favoring more of the mage if they can get early game tempo. Yeah. Uh, reason being is because it's just hard for druid to come back on a board that they've fallen behind without, you know, the, mm -hmm. the right removal spells within this format. Having the right removal spells at the right time is very hard. Very yeah. hard. Nearly impossible. Absolutely. And uh, with this kind of start, there's a lot of debate already. So I want to see what Team Liquid is talking about right off the bat here. Dragon seems better, I, right? Uh, yeah, mm. probably. Just take this trade. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah. You can't do anything else, right? Yeah. Just do it. I didn't see many fireballs, if any, in that deck, by the way. Right, I'm just playing this like a sheer board control game. Okay. Hope he gets a bad portal. Right. It's his worst portal yet. Okay. Do I trade here? This has the same death portal as that. Should I play around swipe? I know he had one. If I trade this and he trades here, and then he can swipe I this. I think the one to face is pretty relevant because yeah. he, he can do the trade. Yeah, yeah. so like, I should just, yeah, just deny do it. the just, trade. Just do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. I agree. Interesting. Just by the way, this is going pretty amazing here. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we only need one more win, right? Yeah, yeah we did Very one. Cool. Just one. Yeah, Maz is uh, debating Swipe. whether he should frost bolt or even just pass here. Really mm -hmm. tough turn for Maz. Uh, but I'm also curious to see how the rest of the games are going. Dog actually had a great start if we go head over to the Druid vs. Rogue. Uh, with being able to have Haunted Creeper and a, a, an Unearth Raptor, but Druid got one of the best cards it can ask for in Swipe. So uh, this is a point where, you know, he actually really needed to come back, so... Oh, uh, looks like uh, we, we actually went back to the Mage versus Mage. Druid game. Yeah. There, it, there it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, this game is pretty interesting in itself just because both players are... It's sort of a stalemate with the Gilb and Stalkers. Um, and Archon has a lot of removal spells, but no creatures to really place on the board, which is really dangerous against mm. Druid because they drop a big bomb. You have to use multiple removal spells to kill it, and then you give them initiative. So it, get, it gets pretty rough. All right, well, uh, it looks like, again, this is an interesting point of, do you take this entire turn from Trump to kill off the Giblin Stalker versus how are you going to fan out the rest of the turns here? Because he does have a turn four play mm -hmm. and a turn five, kind of. It depends on how things go. Yeah. So meanwhile, uh, this is the matchup we were talking about. All of a sudden, even though there was overwhelming board for Dog, Druid seems to have cleared it and gotten to past it. We'll see if whether or not he can outlast it. And here's a really trolly thing that happened. Uh, a Tree of Life came off of a Burgle. Burgle. Yeah, the other card, of course, is Power of the Wild, you see, can see in the Match History Bar. Yeah. Really funny stuff here, DJ. Yeah, and what's funny is that Tree of Life and Anubarak actually have some inherent synergy. Because you can just keep, you can play Anubarak, <laughs> and if there's one turn where they can't remove it, you can just play Tree of Life, and then boom, you, got, you gave yourself almost 30 more health right. to keep playing Anubarak. So if the game does get to that point, it'll be funny to see if those two uh, cards come into play in combination with each other. Yeah, I mean, we precisely say if you have a lot of health to play with, sure, a new Brock on a proactive board might be okay. So, wait, uh, I'm, I, I don't know. Wait a sec, they got a Blood Mage Thanos as well? 
in their yeah. draft. In the road. Oh it's, my it's, goodness. It's basically one Van Cleef <laughs> and one by the teacher away from an oil road. <laughs> right? Oh man, <laughs> it just keeps getting it keeps getting better yeah. and better. And and uh, Dark Iron Skulker, oh, um, Papa was actually complaining about Dark Iron Skulker before the matches today. She was saying it's just too. Good. He clears my whole board and puts a four three. It's, yeah, it's broken. It's 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 undervalued by by a lot of players. <laughs> I think. Let's uh, let's also check in with Zelay and see how he's doing. He's he's definitely the X factor here because he hasn't been able to win any games so far. But looks like he got a really good Hunter's Mark and Arcane Shot swing, keeping his Cult Master onto the board. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that puts uh, that puts Savitz in kind of an awkward spot. Savitz was originally saying this is going really well. You know, yeah. I feel really good about this match, but I mean, is is it? I mean, the hunter has a point where it looks like the cult master will stick unless you pick mm -hmm. up something with the Theory Conjurer. Yeah, and they they really don't want to have to expend a mm -hmm. fireball to kill a cult master. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't feel great. And if we look at the hand, it is upside down, but we can see there's an animal companion and a ram wrangler Ooh. in their hand. Oh, oh my frostbolt. god. The Frostbolt exactly for it. That's not going to be happy for Zelay. Yeah. I definitely want to see what comes out of this Ram Wrangler, though, because I'm pretty sure that's what he wants to go for. Yeah. I, I don't think he can really pass up an opportunity to do that. Uh, in the format video that we played, there's King Crush mentioned a few times. So <laughs> sure. I'm sure. waiting for that to either be, you know, drafted by one of these teams mm -hmm. in their decks or maybe even come out of a Ram Wrangler. Poor Zelay is also on his own island there. King Crush? One time? No. Oh. River Croc. Oh, just as good, in my opinion. <laughs> to each his own. He's, a, he's his own special little flower. Yeah. Well, uh, it looks like Savis will be able to stabilize because he's got some answers to cards as well, like mm -hmm. the Fireball to the, the Draconoid. So it looks like... Uh, oh, he's going to use the Fireball here then immediately Whoa. to try to control the board. Yeah. Uh, also, is completely fair because he doesn't want to keep any beasts onto it. And uh, so I guess with that, it looks like Savis will be able to stabilize in just a couple of turns. Here. Let's go... Back to the Rogue versus Drew. It looks like it's winding down. Rogue got the Anubarok down safely, TJ. Yeah, which uh, is a, a feat in and of itself, being able to have enough control over the game to play Anubarok. Um, so it looks like, yeah, like you said, that game's going to be wrapping up here uh, in a minute. The Rogue versus... No, nah, man, I want to see uh, Anubarok win. It's, I want to see with my own eyes so I can live to tell... The, the, my grandchildren one day. And there's my the sap God. And the oil drawn. That's just that's Six brutal, oh. man. Dog is on a tear. Six zero. Oh. And you know what? I mean, he's doing it with a new Barak. Because yeah. I mean, he need he kind of needed that damage to to wrap up the game here. Oh, he didn't even let a new get the oh, killing blow. Not even oh, the satisfaction. Well. Amnesia taps out. That is three win for Dog and a guaranteed match victory for Team Liquid. So now Archon is playing for the game score brownie points. Yep. And, you know, uh, the fireball was used earlier to take out a Ram Wrangler and to gain control of the board. Oh. Um, and now they don't have it to take out this Sludge Belcher. RK Missiles is great. You know, that's five damage split among the board. Yep. And Zelay is actually running out of resources, even though he does have one big drop in his hand. His Colt Master's gone. He really doesn't have any other card draw tools. So, um, you know, the mage might just push him out of the game. Yeah. Based and off resources. This Cavalli Raider gets out onto the board without an answer from Zelay. That can snowball like crazy. Uh, Zelay's going to definitely need some draw here to help him out. Let's go ahead and listen in Team Archon and see the status of what's going on here. Barely beat Tempo Storm because Tempo Storm fucked up. I think we're in for a rough time. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're not making it. Well, the 6-6 six, six is pretty good here. Ooh, that's a good draw. Because he has a 5-10, he's yeah. probably going to play next turn. And then you can just polymorph um, and maybe AI. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like anything except the first game was winnable, and we had to get so fucking lucky the first game. Yeah. Man, the Rogue is really like, good. Like, we only won our games because we got lucky. It's just... Jeez. I don't know, man. Losing to Inspire Mage. That's my life right now. <laughs> yeah, I tried that deck once. It sucked. Oh! Okay. That's good. Do that. Savannah High Main? Oh, you played no, it? I did it already. Oh, there's that. Button. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, another one of these. Oh! Okay. Oh, that's not bad. It's not bad. Do you think he has a second secret? Alright, so I can intellect here, I guess. You want to AI rather than uh, Kang? Yeah, yeah, that's better. Okay. I yeah. really don't want to trade. I just want to Kodo in face. I just want to six to the face here, right? If you Kodo the scientist, does a secret go off? I don't know. How much burst does the druid have? 
How much resources um, do you have? I think you need to control the board here. Yeah. I like trading. Trade the two for you. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you've got a bunch of big stuff in your hand. No reason to go. Do we want to arcane missiles here then? I think no. so. What? Really? You don't? You really want to play? It's dead next turn if it doesn't. If I don't arcane missiles. But isn't it shape. really good as follow up to thermoplug? I can't follow up to thermoplug. Yeah, you can. You play thermoplug, then you have missiles to kill stuff. Yeah, but I don't want this to shoot. die. What? This if, is gonna die. Yeah, but if he does double trade hero power, he plays a six mana drop. You, doesn't thermoplug just contest it? Yeah, yeah, but we don't want thermoplug to contest it. We yeah, want but what to if play it? Yeah, no, whatever. Just do it. It's fine. It's okay. It's not the best. No, it saves this. It's a one mana six four. Uh, anyone else here? Yeah, uh, there you go. Sure, just play. There's no second secret, by the way. Oh wow, that's pretty bad. Yeah. That is pretty bad. <laughs> They're happy. Yeah. Because I, I missed the arcane missiles. Oh, it's over. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I. Uh, oh, that's over. Fix. Like long, long time ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So there's there's definitely incentive to try, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just get a free trade here. It's really bad. Yeah, it's dumb. But how good is their play here? I don't think he has a six drop. Just has oh Mech Bearcat, which trades up. I don't know how they lost any games in their draft. <laughs> we don't. We're so dead. <laughs> okay. Doesn't matter. Okay, we're just Yeti Pink Face. Interesting. Uh, Right? Sure. You can play sheep this turn. Why? Set up to try and thermoplug next turn. Yeah, I guess so. I think that's actually right. Yeah. And then we subsequently draw the Leper Gnome? Alright. Well, you have to kill the 3-3. Yeah. And then go face. You go face. So That's looking pretty grim. Theoretic yeah, yeah. Well, theoretically, he has to keep trading with this 10 drop. No, no, no. He, that's, he's, he trades and he plays something and we're dead. Oh, God. You have Tomb Spider, right? <laughs> silence. Tomb Spider Silence. Uh, what does that do, though? Like, I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> my plan was for him to do way less well and me to have time to kill command him a couple times, but mm -hmm. it didn't happen that way. Is there anything you can get here? Big game hunter? Not a beast. Right. <laughs> well, unstable portal, right? You wanna go like portal blizzard this turn? Yeah. Sure. I can't play that. I mean you could. <laughs> it's really bad. The trades gets you a leper gnome. No, I have to hurt it for five damage. It's Starfire. It still right? trades though. Oh yeah, 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 I'm Starfire. So just I, like I guess you just portal. Yeah. yeah. I'll get Deathwing or something. <laughs> Boy, my, my game was close. That doesn't do anything. I feel like my game might have been close if he didn't sap my 7 8 twice. So I think I went 0 3, right? Yeah. I stole one game off the back of Absurd Luck. Yeah. <laughs> Amaz stole one game off the back of Absurd Alright, we're taught to told him. Sure. <laughs> This is good. Oh, God. Got him right where he wants him. He's probably going to play, like, triple living roots this turn. Oh, God. Nah. They have, like, Raven Idol and Claw. Don't think we're beating this one either. It's so fine. we went, what, 7 2? Yeah. 2 Jeez. 7, yeah. I really, we... I honestly think that's an above average result. Yeah, like, if you look at our wins, it was I think like... on average, we're not supposed to get a game against oh these guys. God. Well, we certainly average more than zero. Yeah. I so don't know about that. Impossible. Mathematically, is fine. We average one. Average, yeah. We average stealing one. <laughs> I feel like two's pretty lopsided. Seven two, like whatever. All right, well, like uh, you know, Archon doesn't really uh, seem like things are going very well. Yeah. You know, it seems like they've gotten to the point where saying not only did we get 
destroyed, but we weren't meant to win this series. Like, yeah. we weren't going to win any games, you know. This Th those kinds of things, it's like, I really hope they can change that negative attitude sometimes because it, it, it tends to wear on you a little bit. Yeah, especially since they won their first match. You yeah, know, they should be in high They're still spirits. in the tournament. Yeah, they even said, uh, this is an above average result seeing the two decks. They said winning two yeah. games was more than they would have expected if they could have seen the drafts yeah. ahead of time. Yeah. Which is uh, really funny. And. Uh, yeah, they were right. If Trump does manage to close this game out um, against the mage, mage deck from Amaz, then it would be 7-2 in favor of Team Liquid, which is a Convincing really impressive result. Number yeah. one seed. Yeah. At the moment, at least. We'll see how things go. Let's go ahead and listen finally into Team Liquid as they look like they're in prime position to close the game out. Although we've seen some crazier things happen, so don't count your eggs before they hatch. So you could just pistols? trade and you're going to win. Or yeah, just, just play like one. new minions. Yeah, do this one. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Two, five, eight. Yeah, that's fine. If it draws flame strike, though, are you overcommitted to ten? Why don't you just trade the five three into there and then pl uh, play Warhorse? Because it doesn't I'm die. Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh no, no not this first because he gets it. Uh, thank you. Okay. Don't worry, loves. The cavalry's here. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Yeah, and then. <laughs> and then go face. And then I guess Shade is fine, yeah. or Mech Warper, can, like, you value less. Uh, is there any point in rewinding this? Should no. do? No. Doesn't uh, matter if actually, it plays. I think it's yeah. good. Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. Do it, do it. So you can rewind the Blob Bomb. No, well, yeah. You can play the Bomb Lobber twice the same time. That's up for lethal, right? No, it doesn't. That's quite. Bomb Lobber face. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he has a spare part, part in his hand. Yeah. And top deck. Whoa. Wow. Well, it does help him clear them, the big guy. Yeah. Didn't have any bursts in their deck, so. Yeah, I think next turn I play yeah, these two and just go face. Yeah. Yep. And here so. with this too, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. no, no, I'm telling you. What are you. Dude, you're missing damage. Yeah. But a win condition is spell slinger. Uh, okay, oh, oh wait, we have one more stable portal too. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. We can stay in this. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. This is a win. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, there was better to Whirling Blades ping him because if we unstable portal Deathwing, then he can't get out of range over the course of two turns with hero powers alone. Oh my god. <laughs> if we're playing to our outs, man, we should nah, play yeah, to our yeah. outs. This Whirling Blades is good for Flame Wakers. We're going to go like uh, Arcane Dude, Intellect flame into Flame Waker. Wa no, listen. We go Arcane Intellect into Flame Waker, Arcane Intellect, Whirling Blades. Eh? That, that's a move. And that's it clears move. like one of his three guys. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Nine, eleven, twelve. Okay. Spawn yeah. lover, go face. I think. Yeah, yeah you can play the horse rider too, because like they can't kill that this anyway, so they die if yeah, it's if, if, if it's up. Just I think you can play it because even if they get a flame, so they're still dead. But I guess they're still dead. Like it doesn't matter really. Yeah, yeah. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. It does it not did matter. It. Yeah. Good tiebreaker. Also, I like that. Yeah. All right, Andrew, final moments of the match are about to close in. So it looks like Team Liquid will go for a convincing 7-2 victory. Looks like Archon hold on to the last shreds of hope. You never yeah. know with the Maz pulling at the other hand. One thing I do know is that I found the bomb lobber. <laughs> yeah. well, what's funny is that the, if we're playing to our outs, we're playing to our outs. That was what Andy Jack said. Their plays were inconsistent. They're playing <laughs> around right. the worst case scenario. They didn't follow their line of play all yeah. the way through. Yeah. If you're going for the 0.001% chance, you got to go then all, all in the for way. That, yeah. I uh, mean, it would have made for a legendary story, but the story is Team Liquid is 2-0 undefeated behind the back of Dog 6-0 performance and a very strong performance by the rest of the team. Yeah. I mean, if you look at their tiebreaker, 7-2 is very convincing across the entire team. Yeah. Savita and Trump are definitely winning more games than losing. And yeah. as a result, they look like the team to beat. Yeah, and they secure themselves a spot in that grand finals, uh, whether it be second or first. But uh, judging by their deck lineups and their performance in their first two matches, it looks like they're yeah. probably going to be convincing uh, first seed going into that yeah. grand final. So uh, really looking forward to that. Archon, though, they're 1-1 one one now. Mm -hmm. uh, their total game score with their 5-4 win yeah. and their 2-7 loss is 7 points. Yeah. So in order for them to make it, they need like 3-4 to four wins mm -hmm. uh, in their next matchup to you know try and make it to that second seed, which is what they're going to shoot for now. We're a little under halfway through. Uh, next, we have Tepo.
Storm versus Cloud9. That's going to be interesting because both these teams are winless. One team will go 0-2 and almost be on the verge of elimination, if not already. One team will stay alive in a tournament. You're watching the Red Bull Team Brawl presented by the all-new 2016 Honda Civic. When we come back, we're going to see another match here live from Santa Monica Studios. Stay tuned.